Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, this is your host um, Ashutosh once again with the um, happy hours of coaching session. Wishing you all a very, very happy new year. Uh, hope 2023 turns out to be good from a health perspective, from a career perspective, and most importantly, from a knowledge uh, perspective. So I come here uh, with uh, my first topic for the year, and um, this is on PI planning, program increment planning. Um, and again, um, uh, we all know what is a program increment planning. Many of us would have uh, facilitated a PI planning session. Uh, but nevertheless, I thought that um, I will cover this topic, um, although many people would be knowing it, right? I mean, when I was thinking about this topic, you know, what came to my mind was uh, a dilemma which a chef faces, right? I mean, if you would have seen a celebrity chef, they normally present um, uh, all those exotic dishes, but sometimes or the other, they also present some very basic dish, right? Something which all know, right? Uh, something which all can easily cook and prepare. So that was the dilemma I was running through uh, that should I really present um, a, a very basic topic like PI planning, which um, obviously folks who have certified in scaled agile framework uh, will be already aware of it. But then nevertheless, I thought that uh, let me take a risk here and uh, let me try to talk about uh, program increment planning. What are my views on program increment planning? How should an effective PI planning be done? And the do's and don'ts, right? What are the caveats uh, which we have to take into account uh, when we are doing a PI planning event? So here is the topic in front of you. Uh, the first topic of uh, 2023, uh, what exactly is a PI planning all about? So uh, just a quick check uh, with everyone here. Um, uh, is everyone aware about what is the PI planning all about? Anyone who's hearing this for the first time, uh, you can just let me know. You can type it in the chat box that if you're hearing this term PI planning for the first time, or is it something what you have heard? Uh, because that will help me frame this session in a, a different perspective. Um, so uh, in a shoe hari model, right? Where will you put uh, yourself as far as PI planning is concerned? Is it at the shoe state, hash state, or at a restate? You can just uh, put it in the chat box if that helps, because that would definitely help me in uh, uh, planning this session in a better way. So is it a basic understanding? Is it a somewhat um, understanding about PI? Or uh, you have been an expert in PI? So that is what um, I wanted to understand it. And you can put it in the chat box, as I said. Okay, I can see the messages uh, trickling in harsh state. Okay, fine. Uh, harsh state and also, yeah, many of you are saying it's in the, okay, some of you have privately pinged me. So I'm getting it basic state. Okay, fair enough. No worries. I'll, I'll consider this as a basic uh, knowledge what we have. And accordingly, I'll try to frame uh, the question. Okay, um, okay, Herring just just heard the name. Yeah. So, so there are many people who are the more more before the basic stage also where they are hearing this name for the first time, which is okay. I mean, we all are here to learn. So let us um, let us try to understand what um, exactly is PI planning all about and what are the benefits about it. Now, um, just to give an analogy. I'm sure each one has either at each one of us has either attended a great Indian wedding or has been a part of a great Indian wedding in your in our family. Tell me if anyone has not done this, and I'm not expecting a no here for sure. I can expect a no that you are hearing PI planning for the first time, but um, I'm pretty sure that the answer no one can answer to this question as no. Anyone um, who has not um, attended a great Indian wedding or um, has not been a part of it in your families. I think you all have been there, right? And you know what happens in a great Indian wedding, right? We have minimum, I think minimum, even if it is a very, very small scale wedding, we might end up having at least 150 guests, believe me. I mean, that too, I'm taking a very, very conservative estimate that we might end up having around 150 guests minimum. At the minimum, that is a guest we might encounter. And maximum is how much um, any any anyone would like to share the number of a wedding which they have attended and um, the maximum number of guests which were there. You can type in again in the chat box. What is the maximum number of guests uh, you have seen in a wedding? 500, okay. I think I can beat that record. 20,000, wow. Oh, someone has already broken my record. That's interesting. So 20,000, no, no. I have not attended a wedding of 20,000. Um, uh, I mean, it, I'm sure it might be a celebrity wedding what you probably attended. But I have attended a wedding of 2,000 guests, okay? And um, you know what? Um, this happened to be a, a wedding in one of my families. And I asked this person who was organizing all this, how did you manage to do this? 
I mean, you know what he said? He said that, you know what, last 15 days have been really troublesome for me. And you know what, now that the wedding is over, I'm planning to take a rest, um, right? I'm planning to really take off. I'm not going to open my laptop at all for next 15 days. In fact, I should have actually extended my office holidays after the wedding rather than before the wedding, right? Anyways, jokes apart, but um, whatever I'm going to talk about is some way or the other related to the great Indian wedding. So if you have been an organizer in a wedding, or if you have been a part of the wedding where you have closely observed uh, people um, actually running around here and there. And believe me, till the last day, there is a lot of chaos. I have seen in the weddings, right? Till the last day, no one knows what is happening. But suddenly things fall in place, right? On the wedding day, everything is smooth, um, like a you know, knife, hot knife cutting through the butter. And um, everything, as they say, right, all that ends well is well, right? Um, so that's what happens suddenly. So yeah, I mean, something similar experience you will see in a PI planning. I always compare PI planning activity with the great Indian wedding, right? Uh, till the time the PI planning starts, no one knows what's happening around. And suddenly when the PI starts, everyone is enthusiastic. Everyone is charged up. And everyone ensures that the PI planning is a successful event at the end of the day. Right. So, yeah, interesting. Um, uh, I thought that analogy I will try to give you uh, before we deep dive into the session. Uh, now, those of you who are not aware about me, uh, just a quick introduction about me. Ashutosh Bhattodekar, uh, working as a senior industry coach, uh, consultant and a speaker. I have around uh, 25 years of experience in the industry in coaching, in enterprise thought leadership and uh, helping organizations work towards a better way of working. I also have a YouTube channel, uh, which is Agile Coaching and Transformation Leadership. In case um, any of you are not subscribed to the channel, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. You can either scan the QR code, uh, which is given there on the slide, or you can also click on the link, uh, which I have just now shared you uh, with you on the chat. Uh, this YouTube channel um, uh, has around 129 videos covering various aspects of um, an Agile journey, right? Whether it is a Scrum Master role, a product owner role, or uh, even for that matter, a tester or an Agile coach. This actually has got around 129 to 30, 130 videos now. And we are planning to enrich the content as we go along. Definitely useful if you're planning to go for an interview or if you're planning to learn the real-time practical application of an Agile engagement. I'm also on LinkedIn. So if you're interested and if you're not yet connected, uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn also. Uh, one of my coaching styles, which I love doing is, and which I'm not going to cover today, of course, is gamification techniques. So I've given a lot of um, uh, webinars, uh, industry talks, conference talks on gamification techniques in, um, a, in an agile way of working. So that's in brief about me. Um, those of you who are in Pune, we can now connect. Um, I mean, I'm based out of Pune, but I do travel a lot. I travel to Mumbai. Um, and also last month I was in Hyderabad and Bangalore. So love to meet people. So would be happy to meet uh, people um, uh, across the country. All right. Uh, less about bragging about myself and now getting to the topic, right? So let us first try to decode what essentially is a PI. PI, the full form is program increment. And many of us would have heard about this word program. And many of us would have heard about the word increment. It is one of the events in scaled agile framework. So safe um, uh, for short form is the um, name scaled agile framework for enterprises. And it is one of the key events in a safe transformation. So if you are working in a safe transformation for your client, there is a very less chance, in fact, a negligible chance that you have not heard this word PI or you have not um, been a part of a PI activity in your engagement. But nevertheless, there is still a lot of confusion in industry about what is this PI. Okay, or what exactly do we mean by that um, we want to do PI planning? So some people think that um, it is actually a release planning meeting. I have seen um, when I talk with people, many people say, oh, you know what? It's another name for release planning meeting. It's just an old wine in new bottle. Some people say that it's a sprint planning meeting. They get confused with a sprint planning, right? I mean, sprint planning is more at a sprint start. This is beyond that, right? This is something which is an overarching um, event of uh, what is there. Some folks think that, um, you know what, um, it is actually a project planning meeting. It's nothing but at the end of the day, a traditional project, um, the classic um, PMP way of uh, planning a project, um, then trying to find out risks in the project, 
then trying to create a risk register, then make sure that your stakeholder register is identified, created. I mean, the classic uh, PMP way of uh, doing a project, right? Some folks think that it is nothing but program management. And we know the classic definition of a program, right? A program is a collection of related projects which um, deliver a value at the end of the day. And some folks think that, think that it's a requirement gathering session. Okay, so uh, I mean, it's like that elephant with those blind uh, men around it, right? Each person, each blind person has got a different interpretation about what that animal is all about, right? So there's a lot of confusion. There is a lo lot of, I would say, chaos around it that what exactly is a PI all about, right? And let me try to simplify it for you. That is the objective of having this session that if, I, if I'm able to even simplify um, and uh, try to demystify some of the um, some of the wrong notions about PI, the session objective would have been achieved. So what exactly is a PI? Let us uh, try to understand. This is a standard definition which is available on the Scaled Agile Framework website. It is first of all a time box event and um, it is basically um, related to an Agile release trade. So now I have introduced a new term now, ART. Earlier I was just talking about PI. Now I have introduced a new term called art. And let me explain art in a moment. What exactly is the art? The whole objective of a PI is to construct and deliver incremental value to our stakeholders. That is the whole um, intent of having a program increment. A program increment is typically between eight weeks to 12 weeks, which means between two months, eight weeks is two months, to three months, right? Uh, 12 weeks. Roughly, if you take four weeks per uh, month, that is how a program increment um, uh, would be the, I mean, that would be the duration of a program increment. During this eight to 12 weeks, whatever you plan, you have to ensure that your teams, now I'm using the word teams, not team, which means there are multiple teams in a PI, not a single team, but there are multiple teams in a PI. They have to create value they have to validate the value and they have to deliver the value. I'll repeat once again, create value, validate value and deliver value within that um, program increment time frame of 8 to 12 weeks. Okay, now um, most of the times what I have seen is um, we take a middle number out of these. So the program increment is usually planned for 10 weeks and um, the iteration length what we keep is two weeks. So if I have a two week iteration, I, I end up having five iterations planned within a PI, right? That is normally the equation, how it works in the industry, though uh, that is not a hard and fast rule. You can go for an eight week PI also. You can also go for a 12 week PI, but generally uh, to be on the ease of doing things. And this is something which has been replicated across many organizations, many transformation. Uh, they go in for a 10 week uh, PI, uh, two week iteration. And the last iteration is kept reserved. Okay, it is kept for what we call as an IP iteration, where there's a focus on innovation and planning for the future PI. So last iteration acts more like an uh, innovation and planning iteration, where you can do hackathon, where you can train team members on new technologies, where you do an inspect and adapt um, uh, workshop. All those things happen in the last iteration. Uh, just also wanted to let all of you know, the intention of this session is not um, to help you for uh, the certification, okay? The intention is to talk about the real-time challenges and knowledge of what I have gained over the years. This is not an official certification program of SAFE um, or I'm not covering anything from a certification point of view. This is more aligned with the practical insights of how exactly a PI happens um, to be conducted. Although I've taken the standard definition of a PI from the Scaled Agile Framework website, uh, just wanted to clarify on the intention here. All right, uh, so if I were to further um, drill down and make it a little more easier for you, uh, PI is the heart, whereas art is the body. Okay, so just imagine um, our bodies without a heart, right? I won't survive. If my heart goes off, I won't survive, right? So PI is the heart of the agile release trade, right? And that's why you have, just like we all have to take care of our heart, right? We should not be using any anything which disturbs the equilibrium of the uh, blood flow through our arteries, right? So similarly, we have to take care of our um, uh, PI also, right? Done it in a wrong way, 
your entire ecosystem of art is going to collapse. So let's say that I start smoking, I start doing chain smoking or I start heavy drinking. My heart is going to give up one day, right? It is not going to uh, the, cope up with that, right? Maybe it'll cope one day, two days, one year, two years, three years, five years. But probably after seven, eight years, it will start uh, showing signs, right? So similarly, you do a PI with anti-practices, some anti-practices, anti-agile practices, you will end up messing with your body, which is your agile release train. And then what is going to happen is you are not going to deliver value. Your value equilibrium would be completely uh, imbalanced if you end up doing that. So take care of your heart, right? Um, I mean, this is a general advice I'm giving, medical advice. Take care of your heart. Take care of your body. Take care of your PI. Uh, take care of your art, right? Uh, so there's a direct correlation, right? Um, just like a heart has a direct correlation with our body, there's a direct correlation between a PI and an agile release train. Now, a PI is a two-day event. It is a two-day event. And although this is something which is recommended by SAFE, um, what happened in the uh, in the virtual world was that obviously we, we realized that it cannot be done in two days, right? So obviously when it is a virtual event, it takes more time, right? And then uh, also we all know the challenges of a virtual event, right? That um, you cannot sit at one place for eight hours. It's a two full day event. I mean, this is a pre-COVID information which I'm giving. It's a two full day event um, and where we expect all the teams, all the critical business stakeholders to be at one place, like that great Indian wedding. Can we have the wedding without, um, uh, with only the bride and the grooms? Uh, yes, it happened during COVID-19 when there was a restriction of 25 guests from each family. But now again, we are back to that old Indian, um, great Indian wedding, right? The great Indian fat wedding, as we call it. So similarly, PI, when we could talk, talk about PI, PI is an event where we expect all the stakeholders to be co-located. All the critical players have to be at one single location. The whole idea is, um, remember one of the key principles of Agile Manifesto, face-to-face -face communication is the best form of communication. And I stay by that, right? I still go with that. Even though COVID-19 made us operate digitally, remotely, uh, I would still say that face-to-face -face has got its own charm. You cannot beat a face-to-face -face charm. It also provides an opportunity for the linkage between your business IT. One of the most um, the, the glaring feedback we often hear is IT is going left and business is going right. There is no connection between the two entities. So PI provides you that opportunity to align IT and business towards a goal. And this is achieved, the vehicle for achieving this is through your PI objectives. So there are team level PI objectives, which every team has to formulate. There are program level PI objectives, which are there, and there has to be an alignment between the two, right? You cannot have program uh, PI objectives uh, that are taking you to a different direction and your team PI objectives um, uh, misaligning you to a different direction. So that is what um, is an advantage of having this PI at one single location. I still remember my first PI. Um, obviously, I can't name the client here, but um, it was, um, I mean, it was a big room which was there, right? It was a very, very massive room. We were almost around 100 um, people in that room, okay? And this was way back in 2015, I remember very vividly, uh, somewhere around the same time frame, January, February time frame, when this PI was uh, conducted at the start of the year. People had traveled from across the globe. We had people from India. We had people from United Kingdom. This was ha happening in United States of America. So we had folks from UK, um, India, Singapore, Australia, Africa, I mean, uh, except I think South America, we had people from every other continent who had come in, right? So, so it's a it's an event, big Indian wedding. Again, coming back to that terminology, it's a big fat Indian wedding. Uh, what we have, right? And it will give you that alignment. It will help you to align between various teams. It will help you to do capacity planning at one single location, and. The decision making is right instantaneous and at the ground itself. So the ground where the PI planning is happening, that is where decisions are taken, not at a remote place. That is the floor. That is the floor where all the decisions related to the program increment are taken. So that in an, um, is a key highlight of a PI. Uh, the beauty of the PI lies in everyone together, not in a remote way. We were forced to go in for a remote way of working because of externally induced situation COVID-19. 
but um, glad to know that um, uh, the, now PIs are back into a um, into a physical mode where all the people are at one single location and they're conducting this PI activity. So it's a two day event uh, in sight. And if it is done uh, remotely, then obviously you will need more time for doing it, right? Uh, and again, not to basically, this is not something which, um, I mean, yes, the left hand side is something which is there on the safe uh, website but I have tried to contextualize it a bit, okay? So typically, if you take a PI from an Indian um, context, okay, uh, we don't really start a PI at eight o'clock, okay? I mean, if you look at the official calendar, which has been given in the safe training material, uh, they talk it about um, eight o'clock, but typically from a practical insight, 9.30 is a decent time to start a PI. And these are some of the critical activities which have to happen in a PI. So there's an agenda for day one, uh, similarly, there is an agenda for day two. The first and foremost is your business should be providing the context. What exactly you're trying to achieve in this PI? In fact, more than what you're trying to achieve in this PI, what is the business scenario like? What is this product we are trying to build? Where will it help us? What are the current market challenges? Who are our competitors? How can this product help us beat competition? Uh, what are the high level revenue projections we are going to uh, base on this PI? So that is what will be provided by business. So you need a senior executive leadership to come for the PI. Don't go for a PI if your business says, I don't have time. Okay, so that's an off re repeated, um, I would say, argument you would hear that, oh, can you start the PI? I will come later. Or you know what? Uh, you can start with the product solutioning vision. No. The business has to start it. I mean, that's the needed thing, right? Because they have to provide the business context around either the problem statement or around, around the competition analysis or why. Why exactly have you called you here, right? That is what the business has to justify. Remember, uh, it's not a cheap option. Conducting a PI is one of the most costliest option. Imagine 100 people traveling at one place by flight, hotel bookings, uh, food to be arranged, stationery to be arranged. It's not cheap. So business cannot say that, um, no, I'm not, uh, uh, suddenly I got this meeting, so I have to go for that meeting. No, everything has to stop. The business has to give a priority to this meeting. So that is a one hour meeting post which you have a product solution visioning. Again, I'm not going into the details of them. Those of you who have done safe uh, certification would be already aware about it. Uh, so the product solutioning visioning is more about what is the future vision of this product? What exactly are we trying to build? How, uh, what are the top five or six features which we want in this product? The top X features, as you can see there, what exactly are those features and how they are different from our competition today? So that is a product solution visioning. Then the architectural team or the architecture architect will have to present the architectural vision and the development practices. So as you can see, almost the first half of a PI goes in setting the context, right? Um, if, you, if you try to correlate it with the PDCA cycle, plan, do, check, and act. The planning portion is the first half of the PI. Up to lunch is what the planning portion will be uh, done, right? And then, of course, um, we have um, a lunch break, uh, which will be coming up. But after that, even before we go for lunch, um, around 1.15, what I normally do is we ask the RTE. Now, this is an acronym which many of us may not be aware. And I'll talk about RTE a little ahead. RTE is a release train engineer. That is a full form, release train engineer. He or she is the chief scrum master of the art. This person is um, the one who's the basically orchestrating this entire agenda. Okay, the release train engineer. Uh, will explain how exactly post lunch the planning process has to be done. So between 1.15 to 2, the teams go out for lunch. And obviously, as I said, if it is a PI uh, where all the people are at one single location, the lunch also has to be arranged there. You can't afford people going out and coming for lunch, right? So there's a cost involved, what I'm trying to tell. After lunch, the teams go into breakout sessions where each team will try to look at the features. They will try to pick up the features they will do basically a PI planning event. That is what happens after the lunch. And um, the expectation is that in next two to three hours, at least some skeleton plan should be ready. Some basic skeleton plan is something which has to be ready, which has to be showcased. And before we end the first day, 
we will have to go get a management review. We'll have to make sure that this plan goes under the lenses of senior management so that if there are any changes to the commitment, if there are any issues, we can immediately flag them before the day two happens. So this in a nutshell is the day one agenda for the PI. Remember our plan is not yet firmed up. It will get firmed up only at the end of day two. What we have done is we have set the ball rolling. Okay, day two again start, starts with uh, the any adjustments which are there based on the previous day's uh, meeting with the management. Teams again go for a breakout session and then there is a draft plan review which is there. I'll just stop it at this point at the draft plan review because the other things is what um, I'll be covering as I move along, right? Uh, well, what is a PI confidence vote? What is roaming as far as risk management is concerned? What exactly is a planning retrospective? Uh, how do we get a confidence that this meeting is successful? All that is what um, I'll be covering as we move along. Okay. Now, as I said, one of the uh, one of the imp one of the important things is that uh, even uh, let let us forget day one and day two for the time being. Even to get to this wedding day, right? This is our wedding day, right? Day one and day two is our wedding day in this case. To get to this wedding day. There are some prerequisites which have to be met. Okay, so let me first talk about that because many of us get um, too much um, influenced by this agenda. But are we ready for this uh, uh, important day in our lives? Right? Uh, believe me, a minimum of two weeks of pre planning is required. You just can't enter into a PI uh, with your um, uh, running around and saying that, okay, we'll let's start doing PI. No, you have to have a minimum of two weeks of lead time. In fact, two weeks is also on the lesser side, I'm saying for a first PI, where you actually try to make sure that your product PM is product management is ready with the top X features, which have to be picked up. Your architectural team is working on the architectural vision and uh, they have started working on the runway. You have to make sure that your senior executive team gets those invites in the calendar. Many people forget that. They send a meeting invite on a Friday for a PI planning happening on a Monday and then you can't expect the business to come, right? I mean, you have to give them sufficient notice. You have to give them sufficient planning time to plan for travel and all. Uh, otherwise, the whole exercise will be futile, right? You have to ensure that teams are ready whether it is visas, whether it is tickets, whether it is laptop access, uh, system access, building access. So, so you have to make sure that is also in place, right? Uh, you have to also ensure that the infrastructure readiness is at the place. There are sufficient tables, there are sufficient chairs, there's sufficient whiteboarding activities, the breakout areas are clearly unmarked, right? Um, all those things are clearly available at the, uh, at the site where you're planning to do a PI. In fact, there is a standard checklist, what we call it as a PI readiness checklist. And whosoever is the person uh, who's responsible for this has to ensure that we are ready. Believe me, as a person, if I find that things are not in place, I have the empowerment to cancel a PI. Okay, um, so I should have that empowerment that because things are not ready, we are not going ahead with the PI. It doesn't make sense to waste everyone's time. Imagine 100 multiplied by uh, so many hours you're wasting, right? It's a huge um, loss what you're incurring for the organization. So make sure that there is a proper PI readiness checklist. Uh, you start the activities at least a minimum two weeks, but I would recommend for a first PI at least three weeks in advance and try to get all these things in place. And any guesses who's the person who's the karta dharta of all this? Who's that person who's running around in a wedding? The same person. Okay. Whosoever runs around in wedding to make sure that this great Indian wedding is a successful wedding. The same role. I mean, the role is same. The person may not be same. The role is same. RTE. Yes. It is the chief scrum master or the RTE who's doing all this, right? Now, this poor person is the one who does all this running around, right? Uh, making sure all the things are in place, right? Uh, so those of you who are aspiring to become an RTE, a release train engineer, I think um, a food for thought for you, it is a very, very pressure cooker environment job, okay? It's not an easy job. You're always on your toes, especially when a PI is approaching, right? Um, you have to interact with multiple stakeholders. You have to have communication, good communication skills. You might have to, not you might, you have to work across multiple time zones. 
I have seen RTs practically working almost um, cutting across all the time zones, whether it is Australian time zone, Indian time zone, UK and US. I mean, that's the worst part you can get um, in the role of an RT, where you have to coordinate across stakeholders, across multiple locations, right? The multiple geographical locations, which are separated by a time zone, right? So, yeah, I mean, uh, so to answer that question, it is a RTE. And RTE, the key characteristics, as I said, he or she is the chief scrum master of an agile release train, someone who's a servant leader to the art. So servant leadership is more about um, uh, the empowerment. Servant leadership is more about um, what we call it as empathy, right? So that comes in as a part of a servant leadership style. Someone who facilitates and ensures that all the things are in place. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is a secretary job, okay? You might get an impression that this is a secretary job. The answer is no. And IT alone is not doing it. He or she will have to create a team around him or her to facilitate this. But the accountability lies with IT. At the same time, the RTE also needs to ensure that the teams are delivering value. Uh, and I'm not talking about the value at the end of the PI. That definitely is one of the key roles and responsibilities of the RTE. Uh, one of the important things to also understand is that the RTE ensures that the PI planning exercise itself is a value delivery exercise. It is not a value diminishing or a value minimizer exercise but it is a value enhancing exercise is what an RTE has to ensure. And there are ways, there are tools and mechanisms by which um, an RTE can identify this, right? Um, whether the PI is really going on effectively or not. I have seen PIs crashing, uh, I mean, the PI planning meeting crashing after one day, but then, yes, we don't have time to recover, right? Um, somehow we have to make sure that uh, next day morning when we come, uh, we are all charged up and we amend whatever has happened on the previous day, right? So it could very well happen that everything is in place, your PI readiness checklist is in place, still the PI bombs um, at the end of the first day. So very likely to be um, happen. But then again, uh, this is where your agility has to be displayed, right? This is where you have to bounce back and you have to come back um, with full vigor on the second day of the PI planning event. Okay, uh, during PI, what happens? Now, uh, as I said, there are multiple teams in a PI. Each team will do their team level planning. Okay, so uh, uh, how many iterations are there in a PI? In a 10 week PI, we usually have uh, five iterations because two weeks iteration. But what is, uh, what is the first priority is that get at least the two iterations in place, the first two iterations in place. That doesn't mean that if you have time, you are not going to do for iteration three and four. You can always do progressive elaboration, which means you can do a high level slotting for iteration three and four. But the minimum requirement is that get the work of two iterations in place. Uh, that is the objective. Come out with a PI objective at a team level and also come out with risks what we foresee, right? There could be team level risks. There could be program level risks, which are there. Make sure the risks are highlighted. So each team will get a breakout area. So there are boards, actually. If you look at um, the physical infrastructure, which is there for teams, each team will be given a big area where there will be a board, where there will be sticky notes, where there will be felt pens, sketch pens given to you. Uh, you will have to basically do the uh, divide the board into iterations. What you're going to do, you're going to do a high level sizing. You are going to identify the committed objectives, uncommitted objectives. And last but definitely not the least, you're also going to identify the risks related to a PI. So that is what um, happens. And as an RTE, I have to ensure as an RTE, I run around the breakout areas. Okay. So if there are four teams which are working in a PI or who are doing a PI planning, I have to literally run around the four teams and see if they are stuck anywhere, if there is, is there any bottleneck. I have to make sure that the bottleneck is immediately removed. Okay. And one of the ways in which um, as an RTE, I can ensure that a bottleneck is removed is by uh, facilitating what we call it. This is during PI. Okay. During PI, facilitating what we call it as a scrum of scrum event. So Scrum of Scrum event is also another thing which an RT facilitates. Um, and this is a Scrum of Scrum checklist from say Scaled Agile framework, uh, which they recommend uh, the RT to use. There are some standard questions, but again, you don't have to be influenced by these questions. You can always create your own set of questions, 
Okay, uh, so that that is something what you can also always create. I mean, this is just given from a reference pur purpose purpose point of view, and the whole purpose of uh, basically having this meeting is to um, is to have a perfect synchronization. So at the end of the day, uh, we need to have a perfect synchronization between the various um, teams uh, which are there, right? So synchronization is uh, very, very important, um, what is there. So it's one of the key events to have synchronization. Also, many times you find that one team is dependent on another team. You realize it when you start doing the PI planning. Scrum of Scrum is a forum where you bubble it up, whereas a Scrum master, I have to make sure that I highlight it so that RTE can actually take um, action around it, facilitate an action around um, the synchronizing it. Bottlenecks could be related to your hardware not arrived or your software not available or access rights not given. So those could be some of the examples of a bottleneck what uh, you could be having, right? But um, uh, the scrum of scrum, uh, so in a PI, what we normally see is in a breakout uh, session. Let's go back to the breakout room now. Okay, let's go back to the timing of breakout room on day one. So it is from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. So when the breakout session starts at 2 p.m., generally what I recommend is um, have a scrum of scrum session every 45 minutes. Okay, so 2.45 we have one session, 3.15 we have another session, and 4 o'clock we have another scrum of scrum session. So that is what um, I would recommend uh, for a SOS. Scrum of scrum, IT should call all the scrum masters of the team uh, for that uh, 15 minute sync up which is there. Uh, so if it is 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m., uh, so the first breakout session will happen at 2.45, then 3.30, and then 4.15 is when the break, uh, SOS uh, session would happen, where the Scrum Masters will be called. Okay, so that is one of the ways. This is not the only way. This is one of the ways by which synchronization can be ensured as, a, as an RTE. Okay, also remember one thing that once the teams have done with their breakout session, they will do internally, they will review the draft plans. They might take the help of an RTE in getting those draft plan reviewed. Though it is not mandatory, but RTE might be called to just to give an um, kind of a third eye that hopefully the team has done everything well. And um, they have not. Uh, there is no any glaring omission in the work what they have done. Uh, they can also call an RT in between. But I'm just saying that just in case they want to do a final check or a review. Uh, practically, um, I have seen RTs doing that or RTs helping the teams in doing it. Uh, being the chief scrum master, that's a role which is um, uh, also uh, engaged in doing these kind of activities. Uh, as we know, at the end of day one, we have a management review. Management review is where senior management comes in and they take a general stock. Um, I mean, again, it's not, a, I mean, general stock of the situation is a wrong word, but it's a discussion which happens between the team and the senior management, right? Um, hopefully the things should be in place. Um, is there anything needed to adjust the product vision, the scope? Okay, which features um, you have picked up, uh, any feature which you think is still not clear, um, it is not, um, although we put it into the PI um, uh, backlog, into the program backlog, but we feel that um, it is not um, uh, there right yet. So remember, um, uh, there are two types of backlog in SAFE. One is a program backlog and one is a team backlog. Your program backlog consists of features. Your team backlog consists of user stories. So teams, when they work, they ensure that they pick up the items from the program backlog, which are features. They break it into user stories. And while breaking it into user stories, they might realize that the feature is not yet fully baked or it needs further elaboration, which is what um, you will have to highlight it to the leadership team. And um, basically what uh, any decision you want the leadership to take between today and tomorrow to address these issues. So it's a meeting uh, to make sure that everything is in a sync. So I think I gave an example earlier, right? Where the day one bombed of uh, the PI, which I was facilitating. Uh, we actually came to know in the management review meeting. I mean, it was so frustrating to know in a management review meeting things which would have, would have, would have, which would have been better had we captured it earlier. Uh, but um, in the management review meeting, we came to know that we were totally off tangent than what the product vision was. So it happens. Many times it happens, especially. Uh, I, by the way, I always say that um, your first PI can never be successful, okay? Um, I mean, you're, in fact, you should fail in your first PI because you learn a lot of things from that. Okay, if you are passing in the first PI, that means something is wrong, right? Something definitely is wrong or you're not doing the PI the way it should be done. So the first PI is something which I always feel is something which um, we all should experience a failure 
and then uh, move ahead from the learnings out of it. Okay, uh, then obviously the day two begins. Okay, this is a little later actually. I don't know why it has come here. Uh, so this is a, uh, so then of course the day two begins. Uh, the teams actually go in for uh, the breakout session. So so I'm just uh, repeating the slide which was on day one. Uh, so again day two the teams will continue the planning. Okay, so this slide repeat itself. It's like a, a loop back. Uh, so they'll do the iteration planning. They will again try to firm up the PI objectives, risks related uh, to the team level risk, program level risks. Uh, they will try to capture. And most importantly, towards the day to end, they will try to uh, classify the risks using a technique called as ROAM. Now, ROAM is an acronym which is called as Resolved, Owned, Accepted, and Mitigated. So they will classify the risks as resolved, which means someone has taken the ownership of those risks. Okay, then, um, so, sorry, resolved means they have, uh, they, have resol they have resolved the risk, not taken the ownership. So they have resolved the risk. O is owned. So someone has taken the ownership of the risk. So the risk still remains. They have taken the ownership of the risk. Uh, there are some risks which, however, we might say we have to accept those risks. We cannot uh, do anything like attrition is that risk which is there, right? Uh, which we have to accept. And last but not the least, mitigation, right? Mitigation is reducing the impact and or probability of the risk. So we try to roam the risk and we try to come out with a, a plan for uh, risk management. And one of the important activities after all the teams have done their planning is constructing a program board. Now, I'm not going into the details of this. Uh, there's a, a very good literature available on the SAFE website on this. I would strongly recommend you to read it. But this talks about how the teams are dependent on each other. This picture is also from the Scaled Agile Framework website. So I've given a reference there. But uh, this uh, talks about how exactly the teams are um, basically um, dependent on each other. Now, I remember the good old days where you used to actually use a red color wool. Uh, to actually create a program board on a big wall um, in the in the PI um, arena. I mean, we used to call it as a PI arena, just like we have a sporting arena or a sporting ground. We used to actually call it as a PI arena. Um, I mean, this term obviously is coming from basketball. Um, I mean, an arena where the match happens. But yeah, since it was a US client, uh, we used to call it as a program arena or uh, and where we used to construct this. A physical board, I mean, this physical program board, a program board shows um, what are the features when we are going to deliver. So this is something which is a critical dashboard, which everyone expects at the end of day two. So day two around four o'clock, this is what um, everyone is going to expect that which feature you are delivering when. And what is the dependency? What is the dependency on each of these uh, features? Which uh, team is blocking which other team? And accordingly, you need to have um, a strategy to handle that dependency, that how you are going to handle that particular strategy or how you are going to handle that situation. You need to have a detailed plan or an approach around it. So this is one of the critical dashboards which comes out at the end of the uh, PI, I mean, towards the end of day two. But even um, uh, one of the other important things is we take a PI confidence vote. So to, once the plans are in place, once the team level objectives are in place, program level objectives are in place, we take a fist of five. And what is a fist of five? A fist of five is uh, essentially a technique where each person has got an opportunity to vote. And each person has to raise uh, either one, two, three, four, or all the five fingers. Okay, so if I raise one finger, it means I'm very low confidence. Remember, even a junior developer can stop a PI from completing. Okay, so, so remember this, remember this, even a small developer can stop a PI from moving ahead by raising no confidence that I don't have confidence in this. You have to address his or her concern or you have to document it as a risk. High confidence means everyone is highly confident about a PI and its success, rarely you will see all people raising a five, okay? Invariably, what the general guideline I would say here is, if anyone has raised the two fingers or one finger, you have to immediately address the concern of that person, why you have raised a two finger or a, a five finger around, uh, sorry, a single finger around it, right? So uh, very rarely you will find that uh, people are raising, all people are raising uh, five uh, uh, fingers which are there. So it is not, uh, the, okay, so after ROM, why, you know, I didn't say that the PI has failed. I'm talking about the confidence. Did I say PI has failed? No, this is a confidence vote. 
you as an RT will have to address the concerns of the people. Why people are not confident? I did not say PI has failed, but there are a few people who are not confident about PI successfully moving ahead. You have to address those issues as a part of your uh, PI planning activity. All right. Uh, so this in a nutshell describes the entire PI journey. But there is one more important event is the PI planning retrospective. So once everything is done, once the confidence vote is done, once you assuage the feelings, the, the low confidence uh, feeling of the team members, what you need to do is you need to provide, everyone has to do a retrospective. How did this PI planning go? What are the things which liked, which you liked? What are the things which you disliked? By the way, you can use any of the techniques which I have covered in my video on retrospectives. There's a video called Rejuvenating Retrospective, which um, a session which I conducted uh, last year. That video is available on my YouTube channel. You can see some of the other techniques of conducting a retrospective. Not necessarily you have to use this format only. There are, I think, five to six techniques which I have talked in that, like uh, even conducting it like a science fair, for example, right? So if you are interested, do watch that video. It's available on my YouTube channel. But coming back to our PI retrospective, what did you like? What did you learn? What did you unlearn? What do you think was lacking in the PI? So people give very interesting things like the food was not good or the food arrived late. You can even get those comments. And most importantly, what exactly did you long for, right? What, what is that one thing which you missed in a PI? So those are the things what you do as a part of your PI retrospective. And then you formally close the PI with, um, and, uh, with a kind of a wish list that the next PI would be better than the current PI. Remember, it takes at least two or three PIs to set the ball rolling. Okay, You can't expect the first PI itself to be a grand success. Uh, unlike the wedding, obviously the wedding, that's the probably the difference between a great Indian wedding and a PI, that a great Indian wedding cannot fail, right? Everything has to be in order. But we have that luxury or I would say that um, not necessarily that uh, failure is considered as a crime or failure is considered as something demeaning. Uh, you have to basically understand that um, uh, that uh, basically that this is an opportunity for you to learn. Right. So so uh, so that is how we end the PI. And uh, so that is also how I, how I end this session as of now. I've tried to cover everything possible. What happens in that two days in 45 minutes. Uh, do connect with me one-on-one -on -one for any further questions. Um, uh, so once again, thanks for joining in and um, well, uh, signing off for the day and uh, looking forward to meet you in another happy hours of uh, coaching session. So thank you very much and have a great weekend ahead. Thank you.